So I've done a bunch of videos on the 3D printer I have and all the tips and tricks and things I've learned. And one of the biggest things I've done is, and spent the most time, is building this enclosure. Um, and I did it for a couple reasons. Um, first, the noise. Not that this is super loud, but um, I usually print with this in my office, which is right next in between my son's room and our bedroom. And it can be a little loud. There's not a lot of vibration, but it's annoying when it's going at, you know, midnight and it's printing. Um, so this will cut down on the noise. It's five inch inch plywood with insulation, hard insulation on the inside. So that'll cut down the noise. The main reason I did it was for temperature. Um, when I'm printing with PETG, um, that's maxing this printer out. I'm printing at 245 or 250 degrees Celsius. The print bed is all the way up. And I've noticed it's, you know, it's December out, it's 10 degrees outside here in Michigan. And um, if this is by the window, it, it, it varies in temperature. With this, it'll not only uh, keep all those, the cold air out, but it'll keep that hot air in. This, when I open the door and I'm printing on a high temperature, I can feel the heat when I open this up. So it, it'll kind of, make it a little easier for this machine to get up to temperature. Um, the third thing is gases. Now, like I mentioned before when I was talking about um, the different filament, ABS has a hazardous, potentially hazardous gas when you're printing with it. You're melting plastic. So I was originally going to mount a fan and I was going to use this dryer hose. I was going to have this on the top and this was going to extend out to a window. Um, it's, I have 10 or I don't even know how many feet, 20 feet of this. So I was going to have it vent out to the outside. But I have not, I have no plans to print with ABS. Um, I don't have ABS. If I ever did, I would drill a hole, put a fan in here that I could flip on while I'm printing and vent that gases, those gases outside. Um, but I haven't had to add that yet. So that hasn't, isn't really an issue. But it also kind of, I don't know if it contains any of the gas. It's, it's pretty solid and airtight with the insulation. Um, so let me go over how I built it and why I built it this size. Um, first, I looked at the printer and like I said in, in another video, I had this on the side and I'm like, okay, I gotta make it this big, you know, this deep. And you have to account for the bed moving. So I had to measure out to the front here at its maximum point and all the way back. And I'm like, well, that's gonna get pretty big. It's gonna be two foot by whatever. And then I realized, wait a minute, I don't have to have the filament on the inside. That can be on the outside. So that made it a lot smaller. Um, I did have to account for the bed moving, but what I did is I built the box the right size and I realized that I can cut away the foam in just those areas. And I'll show you some close up pictures of where the foam is cut away for this arm here. Cause this, this sticks out a few inches, but it only needs to be that wide in just this area. So it's a, you don't have to make it that big. I wanted to make it as compact as I could cause this is gonna be sitting on my desk. I've seen enclosures, everything from a cardboard box. People say they'll put that on to keep the heat in or people will build this big wall unit um, with those industrial enclosures. So. This is gonna be on my desk, so I wanted it as small as I could. It's still kind of big, but um, I tried to make it as small as possible. I cut away the foam on the front, on the, the back here where the print, the print table extends to, so just that area, and then on this side where just this arm will, tra will travel up and down. Um, so that tried, I tried to keep it as uh, compact as I could. Um, it's made from 5 8 inch plywood, which is something I had laying around. Um, you can get a four by eight sheet of it for 20 bucks. I have some scraps, uh, not really scraps, but I've, I, you know, I have some, some plywood laying around, so that didn't really cost anything. Um, the, on the inside is hard insulation. It's three quarter inch uh, hardboard insulation. It's green. If you go to Home Depot, they have the green stuff and then they have the stuff that's white with a metallic sheeting on it. That would, that might be bad, might not be bad either, but we recently redid our basement so I had some of the green foam left over. So I cut that and I ended up uh, using contact spray adhesive to attach it to the sides. Um, on this printer there is a, a vent, vent holes for the circuit board or whatever on the bottom so I cut a hole in the board and the foam and I recessed it so it 
even though there's feet on here, it sits flush with the foam and the air can uh, vent out the bottom. I had to drill a hole for the power. Um, I also added um, something I haven't added yet. I put the switch on it. I'm going to have lights in here. I bought LED strip lighting. Um, I think for some really cheap ones for eight bucks I bought 16 feet and I'm going to line all the corners with this LED strip lighting. So when I go in there I can just flip the light on. It'll be nice and bright. I won't have to deal with a flashlight anymore. Um, I bought this cheap mini uh, uh, thermometer with a little probe on it and I drilled a hole for that. That's not really necessary. I just like to know um, how hot it gets in there. This thing was from China for four bucks or whatever. So on the side I built, uh, I just put some uh, tool storage, some holes, and I might add another shelf so I can put all my glue sticks and tape on the side here. The door is some Lexan or plexiglass that I had lying around. Um, I think it's a quarter inch and I put a handle and some hinges on it and it shuts. I, I wanted to get it as tight as possible to keep the air in. So I recessed the hinges and to hold it shut I put two magnets here and here and I put two uh, hex head screws on the door so they snap and lock in place. Now I did have to use, I tried to use some cheap magnets, that didn't work. I had to use the, the neodymium rare earth magnets. Um, and a good place to get those, I, I have a bunch on our fridge. I got them from uh, All Electronics. They, it's some website that looks like it hasn't evolved since the 90s, but they have really, really cheap surplus magnets. You can buy 10 for a dollar or something. So I got these small half inch magnets and that works fine. Um, this is just a plastic box, which I'm going to put some more silicone like I did for the filament box here. It'll be airtight, and in between the two, I have a small uh, tube, so the filament never is exposed to the air. It'll stay as dry as possible. Um, so it'll be airtight in here, and kind of the same way as I had it on that um, spool holder, all I have in here is a PVC pipe that sits on some wood rests and I've had no issues with it. Um, the friction is very good um, so it, it, it spools out very nicely. Now the way that I uh, attach this box to the case is I just cut some uh, triangle uh, uh, anchors, not anchors, just triangle pieces that will support it. I could have used metal but again like with the uh, the filament holder on here you have to know okay how far this case is going to be away and how you have to pick this box specifically to fit filament like I said filament is about typically 8 inches in diameter so this is 10 by 12 by I don't know 15 inches or something so I know I can get a couple of filaments in there and I can just pull them out and put the next one on there so if, if I ever wanted to get multiple filaments I could do it on here um, and like I said it just sits on a piece of a wood block that's cut out with a uh, semi-circle cut and it just rotates or it the PVC doesn't even have to rotate it can but um, the filament will rotate on the PVC pipe um, and that's just anchored with screws on here um, the top just sits in here and I have um, some foam glued onto that and it just sits in there um, so I can easily get into it feed uh, feed the filament or if, if I have to work on there or you know take it in and out I can lift it in through the top it sits in the little recessed holes and then I uh, have it marked front or back and I did again I had to cut out an area on the top for this hose to stick up and then the entire printer sits right in there nice and neat um, it's there's a little room on either side but not too much I, I try, like I said I tried to make it as compact as possible it sits on four feet just four uh, circles that I cut out of wood and I took that same silicone that I sealed up the case with and I put it on the bottom so it won't hopefully won't vibrate or rub it used to I used to be able to spin this around nice and easily now with that silicone on the bottom it's really sticky the back again there's a hole here for the power which I had to make kind of big because uh, there's a, a, a coupling or something on the power cable there's gonna there's a hole here where I'm gonna run the wire for the lights hole here for the temperature here's all the uh, I was I should make a shelf or something here 
like I said, so when I have, uh, you know, all this, I can fit it under here like that. Just a shelf to keep all my tools and stuff organized. Like I said, I really like how compact it is. Um, it is a bit of a pain, I'll admit, getting to this print bed whether i have to change it or whether i'm printing and i have to get in there with the tweezers to get out stuck filament i can now only get to it from the front um, whereas before i was able to get to it from the side and everything now i'm kind of reaching in over stuff and it's an awkward angle whereas before i could get to it from the side or the back um, another huge problem especially with this printer is the on off switch is located way in the back which is a big pain, especially when this thing is up at 240 degrees and the print beds, everything's hot over here and you're reaching over top to turn this thing on and off. I have seen people who've modified it and put the switch on the front of this printer, which I might end up doing because that would be much easier turning it on and off. So I might reroute that switch um, if I ever have time to get around to it. Um, other than that, like I said, it's 5 8 inch plywood. I think I used half of a 4 by 8 sheet, so 4 foot by 4 foot should be enough. Um, I glued it together. I, cu I cut it all on the table saw and I took pictures. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I glued it together and then I just used an air nailer to secure it until the glue held. Um, I glued on the foam with some spray adhesive and just stuck it on there. Painted everything up. But I really like how this turned out. I, I feel like it's as small as I could have made it. Yeah, I could have made this dry box a little smaller and if I could have fit the filament on the side or even I've seen put, people put the filament on the top. That might have been another option. I could have had the filament up here and it could have just wrapped around. So there's all sorts of different things um, I could have done. And I don't see myself using ABS, so I don't know if I'm going to put the fan up here. But so far it's been great. It's really quiet. It gets nice and warm in there. And... Uh, I really like how it's turned out. Well, one last thing. Uh, I ended that last video without uh, installing the LED light strip. And I don't think I'm going to have the problem of not being able to see the part anymore. Because it's bright. It's really bright. I think I might have to somehow add a dimmer switch uh, to reduce the voltage maybe. Because that's really bright. But 16 feet. Uh, it was perfect. I was able to cover every corner. Uh, so that should be pretty good. Okay, another thing I forgot to mention with the enclosure, because I made it so tight on the side here, there's not really a lot of room to get your fingers in there and change out this micro SD card. So what I got is for three or four bucks, one of these extenders. And I plug the micro SD card into here, and then I run it to the edge so I don't have to get my finger back in there. So another thing I forgot to mention.